welcome back welcome back you're with desi again we're in another ministry moment today we're on the topic of spiritual maturity and let's jump right into it it's a very expansive topic right so that we're dealing with the heart posture as it relates to your brothers and your sisters in christ we're dealing with the heart posture as it relates to after you get done ministering after you get done singing after your gift has made room and brought you before a great man what next do you do what next do you do with offense how do you deal with the processing spiritual maturity is that process through which you get rid of the mindset of the world you take off the attitude you take off the values of the world and you take on the attitudes you take on the values you take on the mindset of christ and you follow the righteousness of the kingdom no survival tactics are those methodologies those different things that you employ to safeguard your interaction um day to day with the different people that you will encounter survival tactics may manifest themselves through your need to always for example cut people off the moment you feel as though they've offended you the moment you feel as though they've let you down the moment you feel as though they no longer serve your best interests or your 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 purpose um the word of the lord says that perfect love casts out fear what does that mean that means that people don't should not have to feel like they are perfect people shouldn't have to feel as though they they are unable to disappoint you they're unable to be humans they're unable to be themselves they they shouldn't have to feel as though they're walking on eggshells in order to get you to love them in order to to maintain a friendship with you in order to maintain an intimate relationship with you so god and i got to a place where we wanted to take our relationship to the next level. Okay, follow me. I'm going somewhere. And the Lord sat down with me one day and he said, Desi, I want to talk to you about something. And I'm like, all right, what's going on, daddy? Talk to me. The Lord said, there's some more wealth that I have that I want to transfer to you. How do you feel about that? And I was like, mm, okay, yeah, I can do well with some more money. Who doesn't want more money? Come on. And then he said, there, I want to give you some bigger platforms. There are some more people I want to send you in front of. I want to send you to the nations. I want to send you to the masses. Are you ready for that? Some more persons I want to entrust in your care. There are some persons whose anointing I want to have them submit to you so that you can teach them. You can instill in them the wisdom, the, the knowledge, the the inside the understanding that i have given you are you ready for something like that and i said well um i guess because it is your spirit who overtakes me and do whatever you do so why not and i remember saying but god i don't understand um if that's something if that's where you want us to go then why do we need to have this big conversation about it and the lord said because the survival tactics that you've employed that work in the world they're going to be the very reason you fail this assignment if i give it to you no the survival tactics you've employed the mindset the way you go about doing things the way you see things the way you hear things the way you process things they're going to be the very reason why you do more harm to your ministry than good if i release this blessing right now they're going to be the reason why you do more harm than good to the people i will cause to have to submit to you if i release you right now and the lord said because to whom much is given much is expected so do you still want it and i had to take a moment and to think about it because my mama taught me you know that in the heights of um feeling happy or feeling sad you don't make permanent decisions because the heights of those emotions will cloud your judgment so i had to take my time and ease my way into it eventually i submitted to the will of god and i said yes and we took that step to actually beginning to work and to undo the years of walls and um fortresses that i put up to keep people out and to keep myself safe paul spoke to the colossians and he said i never stop praying for you that you continue to grow and you never stop growing in spiritual wisdom knowledge and understanding peter spoke and he said listen I want you to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord also said that we are supposed to desire the sincere milk of the word, right? So anyone who desires to be Christ-like will aim to be spiritually mature. And if you aim to be spiritually mature, you're really aiming to be Christ-like because Christ is maturity. So I want to share with you four lessons that I learned through my processing um, to spiritual maturity. Please note I have not attained perfection. If you know me, 
anybody who knows me and you don't even have to know me closely or personally but just observe me long enough and you will still see that i have areas that i still need to work on but thanks be to god i'm not where i used to be and i have a stronger command on what it really means to be spiritually mature and what is expected of me as a minister of the gospel first thing is humility Humility, 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 humility matters. We hear it all the time. It took me a while to really, really get this thing. So God had to teach me that he can use anyone to teach me, right? He can use anyone to bring across a lesson he wants to teach me. God is not a respecter of man. We look at the outward appearance, but God sees the heart. I wasn't humble enough to receive of truth and revelation and rebuke. From persons I never thought were in a position to give knowledge or to tell me the truth or to rebuke me. I remember God asking me, can I send someone with less talent than you to give you constructive criticisms about your talent? Can I send a drunkard to tell you that you have a drinking habit? And my answer at that point in time was no. I believe that these persons really need to focus on themselves. If you're struggling with drinking, how are you in a position to tell me that drinking is bad? You need to follow your own advice. If you are not able to sing like I can sing, if you are not able to preach like I can preach, if you are not able to teach like I can preach, teach. If you don't prophesy with the accuracy I prophesy at, if you don't pray with the fire that I pray with, um, how can you then tell me how to make myself better? How can you then tell me if I'm off? How can you then tell me if I've missed the mark? That was my mindset. And the Lord had to get me to a place where I understood that that was not of God. That was pride at its highest. And that was a lack of humility. If you're only humble to receive of instructions and rebuke and revelation and truth from persons who you believe are in a position to do that, then understand that you're not a respectful person. You just know how to conduct yourself in public, basically. You understand? So you're not showing your true colors. You're not airing your dirty laundry in public. But does not mean that you're really humble. It does not mean that you're a nice person. And it does not mean that you're a teachable person. It simply shows us that you care about your reputation. And you care about how people see you. But what happens if you're in need of provision. And you're expecting to suck the breast of king. And you're expecting favor from the highest level. And you're expecting blessings to flow from the head. Don't to the to the beard but what happens if god decides that for this blessing i want it to flow from the nose down to the beard oh it's a pretty strange example but you get what i'm saying right you're probably expecting the blessing to flow from the top the highest level and god is saying no i'm not gonna send it from here i'm gonna send it from here to get here can god send a raven to feed you and you don't complain about the blessing that you're getting just as much as if he had a widow ready to bake cake and give you just as if he had a king ready to invite you to feast at his table can god send a raven and you not throw his throw his provision back at his face to tell him this is not good enough are you humble enough to receive a provision irrespective of how god chooses to send it some of us struggle with pride and we know we're, we're unable to accept the blessings of god we're unable to accept the open doors and the opportunities because it doesn't come with the honor and the prestige and the respect and the stature that we want it to come with so god said he's going to send a blessing and he's going to send food for you to feed your family because you're struggling and you're looking for people to send you money to your account you're looking for people to send you money through cash app so you can go to the supermarket and get what you want but what happens if god tells you go to the pantry that's if you're overseas or go to the food of the poor if you're in jamaica or go to wherever you are in the caribbean that gives you free food free clothes whatever what if god sends you there and tells you go get for free what they have to offer are you going to now tell god that this is not good enough i oh i don't feel like this is provision enough this is what we're talking about about when we talk about spiritual maturity understanding that the janitor can teach you about life understanding that the janitor can teach you about hard work in as much as the ceo can understand that what they have to offer are two different levels of information and experiences but it doesn't mean that anyone is greater than or less than the other god is no respecter of man 
He doesn't care about your background. He doesn't care about your social upbringing. He doesn't care about your bank account. What he cares about is your heart posture. What he cares about is your intention. And this is where God wants us to get in terms of spiritual maturity. Understand also that your gift will make room for you and set you before great men, but it's your character that will keep you there. I had to learn that, that my character matters. My character matters. My character matters. Who I am when I am off stage, when I get done singing, when I get done teaching when i get done prophesying when i get done praying who i am it matters so many times i see people and they're hopping from church to church hopping before great from before great men to great men to great men to great men not because god is expanding their bodies and not because it is a blessing but because no king ever wants them before them twice because who you are when you get done singing you're mean-spirited you are proud you are not teachable you're not easy to work with you're not easy to talk to because of that people don't want you to be around them by the time the, the grace lifts in that moment and you're finished doing whatever you're doing you want to be rid of you but it takes a special grace it takes the grace that maintains to be able to maintain connections to be able to maintain platforms where year after year after year people will be able to call you back in good standing and in good grace and people will be able to bless you like it's the first time they're ever encountering you understand that the blessings of the lord maketh rich but what does that mean that means that in order to really be deemed as rich it's not about the amount of money that you spend it's about the amount of money that you maintain you understand so it's not about the different platforms the amount of platforms that you grace out or who you share platforms with the big names in gospel it's about the, the 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 platforms you've been able to maintain the connections you've been able to maintain the favor you've been able to maintain because the man who gets to be a billionaire overnight because he won the lottery he is only a real billionaire if he's able to maintain the billions of dollars that he has otherwise he's just a poor man that would have encountered money but he's not a billionaire so unless we're able to tap into the grace it takes to maintain we can never really attain the the moving from strength to strength the moving from glory to glory that god promised and on this note i want to pause and talk about even social media if you are someone who believes that your social media is for you to post whatever to say whatever you're wrong right the word of the lord said from here on forth let no man trouble me because i bear in my body the mark of christ the mark of christ is not just so god will move if people disrespect the grace or offend the grace on your life it's also a responsibility the mark of christ means that you have a responsibility to be christ-like christ was never someone who tore down people so if on your social media even if they are celebrities you're not permitted, if you're really going to be spiritually material, and if you're really going to be Christ-like, to tear people down, to speak ill of people, to slander them, to talk about them in ways you wouldn't want anybody to talk about you. God is love, and they'll know that we are Christians by our love. Understand that Jesus was not just Jesus when he was teaching and when he was going around and performing miracles, but he was Jesus in his private time. He was Jesus when he was dealing with his disciples. Understand that the disciples were humans just like you and I we saw that we saw their flaws so we should understand that if Jesus was only kind to the people and patient with the people and meek with the people but he was short with his disciples and he was lacking in understanding and in empathy and in, and in sympathy with his disciples then he would he would have had a hard time reaching them and passing down the mantle to them for them to do greater works after him so don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to because the same people who cry hosanna hosanna will cry crucify him crucify him what does that mean if today you preach a sermon if today you teach a message if today you sing if today you pray if today you prophesy and people are blessed and they say oh my god da, 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 and they they are bigging you up they're celebrating you don't let the compliments get to your head and the criticisms won't get to your heart don't think that unless you sing the heavens won't open don't think that unless you teach the people won't be fed don't think that unless you prophesy the people will never hear a word from god don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to but why why should i have a humble approach why if god has anointed me to do this thing should i not show people that i have what it takes and that it's me that the mantle and the favor rests with me well the truth of the matter is the word of the lord says that the race is not given to the swift nor the battle to the strong but time and chance 
time go back and read it it never said it's given to those who endure to the end but it said time and chance happens to all so today you'll be running for the kingdom of god and doing great exploits and tomorrow god may say rest and he will give the mantle or the baton to someone else. If you're humble, then that exchange, that flipping of the switch, you understand that switcheroo? It means that you will have honor to rest. You'll have honor in stepping down. You will have honor in stepping back. But if you're someone that's proud and you believe that God can only move through you, then when God decides to switch things around, it means that you'll be put to shame. The second thing I had to be reminded of was who I am and whose I am. It's a saying that we hear all the time, but some of us don't execute. We have an execution problem. So we hear it. We believe the words that we say. We understand the words that we sing, but we don't live it. We don't show it. We don't do it when the time comes. You don't have to prove that you're worthy. You don't have to prove that you're talented enough. You don't have to prove that you're good enough. Let God be God. I remember there being um, some people that I really looked up to. And these people were not humble people, to be quite honest. And so I got talked down to a lot. I was told, oh, you don't understand. And it's because you're not called to what I'm called to. You're not called to the level I'm called to. You're not at the level I'm at. Almost like, a, okay, little puppy. Okay, little girl. Okay, little boy. Kind of that condescending thing. And so even though I admired the way in which they did great exploits for God, and I admired how people honored them, I admired the respect that people had for them, I had a hard time giving them that level of respect, giving them that level of honor, because I felt less than, because I wasn't being used at that level. And to add insult to injury, they were talking down to me. And I had to get to a point where I began to trust truly trust in the God who sacrificed for me and to trust that I was really created for impact and to be effective. So even though I may only have one talent, I don't need to bury it just because somebody else got five and I probably feel as though God is trying to take me for a fool. I need to trust that if I work the one that I have, if I spend time honing my gifts, if I spend time, you know, focusing and watering my grass on over in my lawn, that whatever God gave me was enough to make my life fulfilling, enough to make my impact effective and enough, enough for me to leave a mark in the earth. I found myself competing not sometimes i didn't even want to be running a race with people but just because they challenged me like my pride could not allow me to step back and say uh -uh, i don't have to accept this invitation simply because i didn't remember who i was if i understand that i'm a holy nation i'm a royal priesthood and i am designed for impact and i'm made for change and i'm made to be effective and that my life really means something that there are persons that only i can reach if i had remembered that and if i remembered whose i was meaning that the god who starts towards me are good to bring about an expected end the God who I am equal to my brothers and sisters in his eyes I am the apple the apple of his eyes and I'm tattooed in the palm of his hands he's numbered the hairs on my head he cares about me he loves me and he has great plans for me had I remembered that there are some things I would not have gotten involved in there are some persons I would not have went face to face having head-on collisions and misunderstandings and blowouts with there are some of us who because we admire people it's almost as though that admiration, um, especially if the persons are not humble and they insult you and they, because they already had at a higher level or they're already being used in ways that you aren't being used and you know this, if they're not humble enough to nurture that longing to attain to where they are in you, right? That admiration, if you're not careful, can turn into envy. And then from envy, it can lead to a fit of rage and you will lash out. And then on the flip side, sometimes some of us will run from our assignments because we believe that we can't execute it like someone else. Because I don't sing like a Donnie McClurkin, because I don't slur like a Kiera Shared, because I don't have the body that um, Tasha Cobbs have. I believe that I can never be used in ministry to sing and to effect change and to shift atmospheres because I don't pray like a Cindy Trim. I believe that I'm really not called to be an intercessor because I can't teach like a T.D. Jakes or a Sarah Jakes Roberts. I feel as though 
I can never be effective in the field of teaching when God is saying, just remember who you are, who you are and who I've called you to be, who I've designed you to be is who I want you to be. Cause Sarah Jakes can never be Desi and yet man. TD Jakes can never be Desi and yet man. Kiara Shirt can never be Desi and yet man. And on the flip side, Desi and can never ever be any of them. However, the spirit of God is in all of us. So I had to get to a point where I understood and I respected my journey. I respected my assignment. I respected my grace. I respected my anointing and I expect, I, and I respected the limitations that came with them. A lot of times the persons that we see and we admire, they have endured things that we would not be willing to endure. We would not be able to stand in. There's some things that we've endured that a lot of other persons would have given up for less than that. They would have gone crazy. These are things people have paid for the oil that they carry. They've paid for the anointing that they carry. They've paid for the grace that's on their lives. The ritual maturity is about understanding that God has equipped you with everything that you need for life and godliness. So there's no need to be jealous of anything or anyone else. There's no need to be envious. There's no need to be looking over your fence to see what your brother and your sister are doing. Sometimes what you think is real, sometimes the green grass you see on the other side is fake. So really and truly, it's only greener where it's water. If he be lifted up, he'll draw all men. So the more you spend time lifting up God, magnifying God, and engaging the grace on your life, then God will do the drawing. The people who are supposed to be gathered to receive of what you have to offer, he will send them. Those who are designed to sow into what you are doing, they will come. Those designed to come and be a blessing to you, they will come. Tell yourself that whatever you are tasked to do, whatever you're assigned to do is just as important and just as valuable as those you look up to. There's no need to feel less than, there's no need to feel grudge, there's no need for competition. Let's just all focus on our own lanes, remember who and whose we are, and remember humility and let's aim to be spiritually mature. Another thing I had to learn was sincerity, right? The word of the Lord said that, pe that these people love me with their mouths, but their hearts are far from me. So I had to get to a place where whatever I was saying out of my mouth really matched what was in my heart because some of us will do what we need to do to be politically correct and to safeguard our reputation but it's not really what we really mean so what am I really saying when someone offends you and you walk away or you smile is it because you are really letting people have the opportunity to be human and to let your love cover a multitude of their wrong or is it because you're a ticking time bomb that just has not yet exploded are you just biding time i used to be like that i used to be a steward where you will offend me today offend me tomorrow offend me next week offend me next year and i will say nothing but the moment i snap the moment i blow that is it like, and this thing is going to be blown out of proportion and it's going to be something bigger than it ever needed to be in the first place. Had we just spoken about it and had we just come to terms and just talk about the issue. We can fool man, but we can't fool God. So on the surface, we may be fine and understanding and we're kind, but deep down inside, we're, we're, we're miserable. And we grumble a lot and we complain and we murmur. So through sincerity, I had to understand that tolerance is not humility. Just because I tolerate you, Right, And a lot of us in the kingdom, we will dislike people for no reason. We have no business disliking people. It's okay to not like the spirit that operates in them, but understand that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities. So your enemy is not your brother and your sister. So a lot of us, we will dislike people and we smile with them. It's that level of hypocrisy where we will say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But deep down in our hearts, we'd rather them not exist. Deep down in our hearts, we'd rather, we'd rather not be there with them. And so God had to get me to a place where the, the smile on my face really matched the smile in my heart. And it's not a case where I was wearing my heart on my sleeve. But it was, it was really a case where if I said I was fine, I needed to make myself fine. If, if you offended me and I said that all is well, I needed to make sure that all is well. What did that mean? That meant that if tomorrow, if I said that all is well and tomorrow you come and you're hungry, I should be able to feed you with all sincerity of my heart and not with the mindset that, oh, I'm going to be heaping up coals of fire on your head because you're trying to use me and you hate me. Mm -mm. 
God wants us to get to the place where we're sincere. If we say we, we love someone and we're not going to hold something against them, we really need to love them and not hold it against them. And it doesn't mean that we're silly. It doesn't mean that we're foolish. It means that we choose to have the heart of Christ. Jesus know that Judas was Judas, but he didn't treat him any less than he treated Peter or Paul or James or John. He didn't love him any less. He didn't not include him. Yes, we understand that when it got to the more intimate and intricate detail, he wasn't a part of the inner circle, but it doesn't mean that he loved him or treated him any less. To the point where when the Lord said that one of you are going to betray me, no one knew who it was. Everyone asked, Lord, is it me, Lord? Is it I, Lord? Will it be me? Is it me, Lord? So where you secretly walk around and you are um, anticipating the downfall of people who have wronged you or you are anticipating a confrontation and you're just waiting for them to make the first move, it's wrong. It's not of God and it means that you're not yet fully spiritually mature. The word of the Lord said that, when you see your enemies fall, you're not supposed to rejoice lest God is displeased and he turns away his heart displeasure from them. So the time God should be taken to avenge you, he has to take it now to correct you and to correct the bad mindset and the bad attitude and the bad outlook. The reason that fuels why we do what we do will tell the difference. And God knows. I've encountered some very, very mean-spirited persons in ministry. And I had to get to the point where my survival tactics were not my first instinct. What do I mean? It means that I had to move away from saying an eye for an eye because that would make the whole world blind. I had to get to a point where I understood that, listen, people will be people and just because you betrayed me, just because you stabbed me in the back doesn't mean I have to do the first opportunity I get. I had to get to a point where I now said that where friendships die, secrets Whatever they've entrusted in my care, they die with it. Be sincere with people. If you're not pleased about something, tell them that you're not pleased and tell them in love. Don't pretend like you are. I had to get to a point where I was genuine. Then the fourth thing I had to learn was I had to learn to develop a heart for people. So because of my sincerity in past times that was not reciprocated or wasn't treated with the level of honor and respect that it ought to have been treated with, I started to shut people out and I no longer had a heart for people. But God had to know, God now began showing me that you can't Take the mic and so powerfully sing that God is love and God, God cares and he's patient and he's kind. And then say you're an, you're an ambassador for God. You're a conduit of the power and the grace and the anointing of God. But yet still you're not patient and you're not kind and you're not loving and you're not understanding. Especially because now I was flowing in the prophetic right and even flowing in the prophetic the moment god you 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 enter people's personal space with that and god now reveals that this person is struggling with that and that man is it has dealt with that in the past and mommy did that to them and daddy did that to them and cousin did that to them and family friend or church member did that to them when you begin to 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 connect with people in such an intimate on such an intimate level and what the intimacy that i'm talking about now is not sexual it's not perverted it's pure it's a high highest form of love and intimacy that you can have with a person that kind of love that comes from only God right you can't do that and then shut people out because oh I don't feel like ministering I don't feel like being nice today I'm human I'm going through my own stuff and I'm feeling emotional right now no 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 the Bible did not say that Jesus was only Jesus on the days when he was feeling good. He, he was not only just Jesus on the days when people cried Hosanna. He was also Jesus on the days he, they cried crucify him. He was also Jesus on the days they asked for Barabbas instead of him. So I had to learn that because I'm in the kingdom and because I'm in ministry and for the level of ministry and the type of ministry I'm called to, I had to understand that ministry went beyond my feelings. So even on the days when I don't really feel like listening to anybody's problems i had to put my feelings aside and to minister even on the days where i was going through my own personal problems and i didn't feel like singing i had to stop and to minister so when people offended me i stopped just getting up in my feelings as my first response and my first response was known to understand what are they going through why do they think the way they think so forget about what they did to me we'll get to that 
But my first instinct was to understand them. And then I spent time praying for the people that did me wrong. And then I began to see them the way God sees them. I saw them as people struggling with their own issues. And this included church leaders. I now have friendships I can hold on to simply because I'm able to overlook people and their flaws and to pray and to love them and to be patient while God works in them, while God works on them. You understand bearing in mind that i'm also flawed and bearing in mind that i come with things that people have to put up with i come with times where i offend i cross the line and i'm not perfect so i got to the point where i understood that where there is no wood the fire ceases so if i don't follow up every little foolishness it dies down and the work of the Lord can continue. I learned not to major on the minor stuff. I want to encourage you while you're pursuing spiritual maturity, read for change and not for knowledge. When you read for change, knowledge will come out. If you only read for knowledge, you'll never change. Because reading for change means that you're reading what is required of you and then matching your life to that and taking the necessary steps, a daily conscious effort to get to where God call, is calling you to be. And we're going to stop right there. Father, we thank you for the word that has already gone forth. We thank you that it has fallen on good soil. We thank you that they are hearers of your word and that they are doers of your words. Because your word said that if we are hearers only, we're like a man who looks at ourselves in the mirror. And the moment we walk away, we forget the manner of man that we are and we deceive our own selves. But as we desire the sincere milk, that the fruits of the spirit will be made manifest as we do what we are required to do the fruits will be made manifest and people will know that we are christians by our walk they'll know that we are christians by our talk they'll know that we are christians by our love help us that we don't willingly hand over our blessings and our future and our ministries to the enemy because we are not mature enough to know what it takes to safeguard and to keep and to protect even now i bless each and every person that this broadcast will reach be with them now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Stay blessed. Stay tuned. Talk soon.